Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Get early access to all of our interviews, including the monthly Chichester chats with writer and comic book legend DG Chichester, new episodes of classic Capes and Lunatics shows, including The Quantum Zone, This Thatter the Third, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month. We'll video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash capes and lunatics. Hope to see you there. Diggity dank. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Nightwing News Trike Addicts Edition. Ugh. I am Phil joining me as always. It is. Hi, I'm Kristen. <laughs> and this time, well, this is the second episode of the month, so you'll get your classic review. This time, Nightwing 56 through 58. Uh, no, not that 56 to 58. The one from the from 2001. One from back in the day. Yes. No. If we did, if we did the other 56 to 58, that would be Rick Grayson. No. Uh, we've already done that, and we're not pull, and we're not going back. No. No. There's so much. Back. Dick Grayson's been around for what 80 some year, eight years. No, we, we don't need to go back to that era. 83, about to be 84. Oh, that's right. You're the historian. When when did Detective 38 come out? Do you remember like the month? Do you, do you know what month it released? I think they say March or April. Okay. Oh, that'd be great if it was April. That's my birthday's in April. Yay. This since oh so it was April when they had uh, the sensational find of uh, nineteen forty. I think I mean probably it would come. No wait, what is it with comics? They actually come out two. They come out two months before the date on the cover, right? Yeah, yeah, it's something like that. It's just so confusing. I don't understand why they just don't. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's, I, I, th I don't think you would think that's a comics thing. I think that's like a magazine thing, too. I, like, I think magazines might do that, too. I'm not sure. Yeah, but it's weird. I know. All right. but So, yeah, I was going to say, I don't think we have any new uh, any new news for Nightwing since we recorded last. Cause... Um, I would just like to say that I was reading the solicits for 111, which is in a couple months. And I'm stoked because the backup story has to do with the plague. Oh. It said something about the plague is ravaging 14th century Europe. And I was like, what? Yeah. Boy, they are they, boy, they are just pandering to you, Dick Grayson in the 14th century. It's like, jeez. It's a good time to be alive. <laughs> <laughs> well, not, not with the plague. But I do like that cover with like Batman in the background. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Yeah, because that so in the main story, Batman is going to appear because I think that's gonna be the story where they try to deal with what happened. Remember when Dick froze? Oh, okay. Well, they yeah. said something about like Dick's been having a problem. Can the world's greatest detective help him solve it? And then there's something about the plague. But but that's a separate story. So yeah, yeah, I did see that. Yeah. It's a I was right. like, yeah, plague. <laughs> you might, uh, that's the first thing you go to. Oh, oh plague. I'm like, or, or you'd be like, oh, we're going to, maybe we're going to get some good father son time with Bruce and Dick. No, she goes right to the plague. I mean, and both were exciting, but the plague comes up much less often. So that's probably, probably going to be your favorite issue of the year. And it comes out early next year. It's like, yeah, Bruce and Dick together in the plague. I mean, we'll see. If they do a terrible job with the play, uh, then I'll hate it and be mad. Or or a bad job with like you know Bruce acting like a jerk or something. For real. Well, it's very confusing because I did read, which we should save it for next year once it's come out. I did read the what was it? Scorched Earth? Was that the last one? I think so, yeah. Of the Yeah. Batman Catwoman War. Yeah. And Batman. I mean, he pulled his head out of his butt a little bit. Yeah, a little bit, but he still has Zur and R running around in his head and stuff. So, yeah. Right, and it kind of seems like he 
does he know it, but he just won't admit it? Or what's the deal with that? Or is it like Zern R doesn't want him to know? He knows. He Again, it's oh. a Bruce thing. He don't want to admit it. Bruce is the one who okay. created Zern R as like a backup in his own head where it's like, oh, if I ever need to be taken down, who can take me down? Oh, myself. All right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty much, I think, I think it's Zern R is basically Batman without a Bruce Wayne influence and, you know. Because even in earlier, I think it was a backup in one of the earlier issues, you know, they showed back in the day, you know, Zern R's was written this year. Oh, come on, we can kill the Joker. Come on, you know. Okay, because, yeah, I think it's Scorched Earth. Dick is like, or maybe it was one of the, but he says something about, like, you're not, you know, on your game. And I think he says something about Zern R. Oh, yeah. Like, no, no, or whatever. So yeah. I didn't know if. It was that he didn't know or he just didn't want to. Oh, no. Bruce knows. A few of them know. Yeah. Because, yeah, there was one. He's completely. I mean, we'll get to it next year, but he's like completely out of control. And Dick's the one who shuts everything down. Like all, his, you know, like. He's yeah. Like, yeah. You I don't have that. access was, to the computer. You don't was, have access to this. Yeah. I think it was 138. Yeah. Well, I mean, spoilers at the end of that. I mean, if you read Scorched Earth, you know, it's, you know, basically Bruce leaves and he's. He's basically like, you know, he can't be around the family anymore. He's basically says like, you and Barbara are in charge. Yeah. So. Which is why it'll be interesting to see what goes on in Nightwing if it's kind of like, you know, separate sort of things. Yeah, because basically the only one who took Bruce's side was Damien, so. Right, and at first it didn't really make sense because it was like, why would they all be like, yeah, stealing? But then when you realize Bruce was going off the off the rails with this Zer and R, I mean, what he did to Jason was ridiculous. That's oh terrible. yeah. Oh, I know, I know. It's, I'm like, where? I mean, we don't need to damage that character anymore. You know, Jason doesn't need that. We were kind of rehabilitating Jason, and now we're they're we're throwing. Mon more monkey wrenches in there. Yeah. Well, I think he's supposed to get a mini series or something. So. Yeah, I think so. Come on, make it all going. Bap characters are popular. Hopefully, he'll get fixed. Yes. <laughs> all right. Do you want to get to these issues? I think. Let's do it. All right. I have, I know, at least for the first one, I think for all of their synopses. Much all right. less, this is much less depressing. Yes, yes, yes. Nightwing number 56 is the first one from June 2001. Stocked. Writer Chuck Dixon, penciler Greg Land, uh, inker Drew Grassi, colorist Patricia Mulvihill, and digital chameleon Lenore Willie Schubert, and editor Michael Wright. Uh, all right, remember where we left off two months ago, kids. Shrike is eager to take on Nightwing and explains to Blockbuster that he has a history with the vigilante dating back to the time when he was Batman's sidekick Robin. Black Canary visits Oracle and surprises Dick Grayson as he steps out of the bathroom after showering. Feeling a, a little embarrassed, yeah, right, a little, Dick quickly puts on his clothes and leaves. Dinah fires questions at Barbara, who insists that nothing happened. But later, the two women work out, and Barbara tells Dinah how her relationship with Nightwing has, in, has evolved, and she has a huge crush on him. While Nightwing drives back to Bloodhaven, Tor continues to elaborate his escape plan from Lockhaven Penitentiary with Kristen's favorite, Tad Ryerstad. <sighs> <laughs> at least they, you know what he at least they kept him to a minimum so he he wasn't too bad this time. Yeah. Uh Torque has set his sights on the guard who is also known as Amygdala. He is super strong and needs medication to control his emotions which Torque wants to take advantage of. After doing a shift at the police station, Dick gets some sleep before going on a patrol with Nightwing. Right in the city center he runs right into a setup and has to face a group of four ninjas. Dick easily defeats them, but Shrike observed the fight and then catches Nightwing using a net. Shrike reveals himself and calls Nightwing both Robin and Freddy. Dick remembers a man named Shrike, but he is supposed to be dead. <laughs> it would, ooh, he's supposed to be dead. Which, of course, uh, we covered in Robin Year One, which I think... I think that was like episode 20 something. So scroll way down, kids. <laughs> All 
But as we looked before, these like kind of came out around this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like Robin Year One came out just like right before, I guess. Yeah. But yes, we covered this on the podcast a while ago. I think it might have been it might even been 2020. <laughs> All right, so what do you think of this first one? That was good. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh we get the whole the whole bathroom incident and I'm trying to remember. I, I mean she might have said it to Dick before, but I think this is the first time we've seen Barbara actually like tell another person. It's like, oh yeah, I care for you know how much she feels about Dick and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then Shrike, he's like, yeah, okay, I'll. He's like, yeah, I'll take down Nightwing for you. He's like, but I'll take the five million and <laughs> like a blockbuster. He's like, well, good. And he's like, I want to deal with professional, not like some psycho. Uh, the bad guys. But yeah, that's not even a net. It's like he he uh like threaded fish hooks through there, so although I guess Nightwing's mostly covered, you know, so not too bad. But yeah. <clears throat> and the Greg Land art uh is good in this. Especially Nightwing jumping from building to building. Just seeing if we missed anything. Uh... Okay, I will say that this is so random, but it came into my head on page 20 where he's beating the guys up and he says, I might even pop a sweat. I've never heard that phrase before. I've always heard it as break a sweat. Yeah, me too. Yeah. (laughs) I don't know if that's a thing or not, but... I guess. I mean, obviously, I could figure it out, but I thought, oh, huh. I've never heard that one before. And only in the bad books, it's like, oh yeah, there's there's a bunch of ninjas on a rooftop. Ah, that's not too. That's not unusual. It's just it's another night in Bloodhaven. Another night, another ninja. Exactly. All right. So, yeah, pretty good setup. Uh, should we get to the next one? Yep. All right. Uh, Nightwing 57 from July 2001. Yesterday never dies. Uh, yeah, really changing up the art team here. Say, uh, Rick Leonardi does the pencils, and then Jesse Delperdang and Mark Farmer are inkers on this one. Yeah. Uh, I like the first page. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, where he's Robin and does the cartwheel, and then he's Nightwing, and then yeah, Nightwing yeah. Again. Disco Wing, and then Nightwing. They left out the one I like the least, so that was awesome. <laughs> Maybe someone other, someone else's least favorite too. I mean, it's obviously the worst one. <laughs> and again, I mean, they almost look a little similar, except you know, just without the collar on the on the one you hate and stuff. So I mean, at least they put the. Yeah, the more superior one there. Disco all the way, baby. Exactly. (laughs) Shrike has Nightwing chained, unmasked, and hanging upside down. Dick now remembers his captor by the name of Boone, who was the hench boy of the original Shrike. I'm sorry, does it really say hench boy? It does say hench boy. (laughs) Well, he wasn't a man yet, so what do you want to call him? I know, but that's so funny. That's a great term, hench boy. Henchboy. <laughs> Bring me my torture tools, henchboy. Uh, uh, Boone took Dick's fingerprints in hopes that his true identity will also lead them to the secret identity of Batman. To make things worse, the ninjas accompanying Shrike search through Dick's outfit and find a love letter which Barbara secretly put there. But then Dick's costume sends out an electrical charge which knocks out the ninjas. While Shrike is gone, Dick hopes to somehow free himself from the chains. Meanwhile, Barbara is woken up by an alarm signal indicating that someone is running fingerprints on a Bat family member, in this case, Nightwing. She has prepared false identities, but first she slows down the search process. 
Afterwards, Oracle and Black Canary, who is a current guest at the Watchtower as well, take the Hummer to drive to the last transmitted location of Nightwing. Dick himself has improved his situation a little bit, and when the ninjas wake up, he starts to fight them despite still being chained. When Trey comes back from his computer, which gave him the name Chester Honeywell, Nightwing, yes. Nightwing is free and ready to battle him, but Trey has more ninjas at his side. At the same time, in Lock Cave in Penitentiary, Torque is visiting a doctor because of alleged neck problems. Then Tad Ryerstad fakes a seizure so that Torque is able to take a quick look at the current pharmacy index. Oracle and Black Canary have arrived at Nightwing's last position and they find his transmitter. Looking at an abandoned pump house nearby, Dinah sees a chance that Nightwing has, uh, has a chance that Nightwing was taken there. All right. So I know it's for for comedic value, but I'm like, shouldn't shouldn't you? I don't know. Shouldn't Shrike or Boone or whatever we're calling him realize it's like, yeah, Chester Honeywell sounds like a made up name. I mean, yeah, that's why it's so funny. I mean, although I, I'm guessing he's just not he hasn't put two and two together and be like, oh well, they have a way to you know, you know, uh, fool the computer. It's just like, oh no, right. I I hacked into whatever and yeah, that's right. Like, if he thinks it's fake like i mean how are you gonna get the how are you gonna get the real one but i love that fake name because i know a lot of people think dick richard is a terrible name but richard is an amazing name compared to chester yes yeah chester is so much worse <laughs> well they're both kind of i mean not we're not richard so much but i was gonna say like chester's like a old-fashioned name it, i mean richard's pretty old-fashioned yeah but i think you see more i mean it depends the group i mean in the united states there are not a lot of richards although more black men named richard than white men named richard like if you meet a white guy named richard he's old um but, uh, like a british person they could it, yeah they might not be and there's a chance you might see some you know, like young richards these days i don't think you're finding anyone under what 50 60 who's named chester in this country at this point uh yeah probably not yeah, it, I mean, sorry if anyone's any, any young people out there named Chester, but yeah, it seems like strikes me as an old name. Yes, mm. for sure. Speaking of Chester, I always remember because my mom said once when she was younger, someone mentioned the president Chester A. Arthur, and she was like, "No way, that's such a terrible name. No way, we had a president named Chester." <laughs> Uh, they were like, "Yeah, we did." And she was like, "Ugh, terrible." <laughs> Say it worse than Dwight. Uh, yeah, because Dw there was that character Dwight on The Office. So I oh feel like yeah, Dwight I feel like Dwight probably has a cult following now. Oh yeah, I mean, people love the office. Yeah, yeah, The Office is awesome. There was no one named Chester on The Office. So. True. <laughs> Actually, there was a guy named Chester on Law and Order SVU. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But was that his last name? No, I think it might have been his first name. I think, although he didn't, last, he didn't last long, so uh, he, he didn't. didn't. His, name. his last name was definitely not Honeywell, though. <laughs> oh, that's true. Uh. Oh, but the, the way Dick gets out of these chains, I mean, it's like swing himself up and kind of like drop himself on the beam. Yeah, that was pretty good. I will say the so one thing that is interesting to me, and I don't really know what I want the answer to be. I just find it worth commenting on is how DC can never decide whether the Robins are famous enough that people would recognize them or not, you know, because sometimes, yeah. you know, remember when Dick was Batman, there was that one where somebody saw him at the gym or whatever. And they were like, who wouldn't recognize Gotham's Paris Hilton or something like that. <laughs> um, What's well, so funny. I don't know if you ever saw like the animated version of uh, under the red hood, you know, like in the comic, you know, it's the story where when they first revealed, jason's back as the red hood in the yeah. animated version it's so funny when nightwing first shows up there's like two hoods sitting there and they're like who's that and the other hood's like oh that's nightwing he was the first he was the original rob and i'm like how would some street thug know you know know this 
unless everyone knows this. Maybe they can just figure it out because I, I, it was just exposition to fill in any audience member. But I'm just like, right, yeah. yeah. yeah that's, uh. Well, there was a thing which I mean, I didn't actually watch Justice League Unlimited because I was in my kind of like not superhero phase then. But I've seen the meme, and it really makes sense where Lex Luthor gets transported into Flash's body in one of the episodes. So he's like, well, "Let's see who I am," and he takes the kid, the got mask, and he's like. I have no idea who this is. Yeah, and it's Wally. And he's in Wally's body. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And that's so funny and so perfect. Mm. Um, and that does make sense, particularly because why would Lex Luthor know Wally? Because Lex Luthor lives in Metropolis and Wally lives in Central Wally's City. not famous. Yeah, Wally's not Bruce. Right. Right. And Wally's not and Wally's not famous. But that's what I always find interesting with the bet is of course, yes, Bruce Wayne, but they never seem to fully decide if they think people it's yeah. like when it's convenient, people are like, oh, I have your Gotham Spirit Hill, and of course I'd recognize you. But when it's not convenient, they're like, oh, we don't know what you look like. And I find that interesting. I mean, yeah. I can understand it more with, say, Jason, because, of course, he died and was gone. And, I mean, I guess it's like he grew up. And he wasn't around as, lo as long as any of the other ones, yeah. Well, right, and I mean, he stopped being in the eye when he was a teenager, and yeah. then the pit, like, aged him. Yeah, he aged grew, him yeah. yeah. Yeah, or I guess the pit, like, made him age to where he would have been if he hadn't died, right? Yeah. yeah and so, yeah. so, yeah, it makes sense that people maybe, because, I mean, as far as they know, um, Jason Todd is dead, so why would you think, oh, that's Jason Todd? <laughs> But it seems like with Dick and Tim, Tim, yeah, it's like, I mean, I don't know if I think they should be recognizable or not. It's just interesting to me that they're not consistent. Yeah, I mean, I think the only uh, one of the only times it made sense is when Dick was Batman, you know, when everyone thought Bruce was dead because I would assume Dick was in the public eye then because they're like, oh, he's in, you know, except for like maybe Damien. Oh, he's inheriting everything of Bruce Wayne's and stuff, so. I can see the, you know, all the media being focused on him at that point. Yeah. Well, obviously he's not famous enough for Strike to know who he is. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. That's right. Because the mask is off. Yeah, yeah. Right. That, that that always and that's what's well, the thing that gets me is any story where people can't make that leap or someone either finds out who Dick is or who Bruce is and they can't figure out who the other one is. I'm like, really? Really, especially that's you know. why the Lego Batman movie is so amazing because <laughs> they totally make fun of that. Batman is Bruce Wayne's roommate. <laughs> well, that's why the Grant Morrison, when he came out with uh, Bat Batman uh, Incorporated, I mean, that was like a brilliant thing because you know, Bruce went public and says, Oh, yeah, I fund Batman, you know, I give him the money for the, all this stuff. So, so if anyone could try drive it back it's just like oh no i just i just pay him though yeah but i've seen some funny um i mean i've definitely seen some funny skits where these <laughs> i saw a funny skit where these kids were sitting around having uh i mean it was years ago it might have been on crack.com they were having a sleepover and they were like oh, guys Bruce Wayne is Batman. And then the cops show and then the cops show up. Commissioner Gordon shows up and he's like, because we need you to keep this quiet or whatever. And the kids are like, okay. And then afterwards, the and then afterwards Gordon's talking to other cops and they're like, oh my God, those kids must be so stupid. I can't believe it took them until they were 15 to figure it out. <laughs> oh, what's oh God, what story was it? Oh, there was some comic somewhere. I can't remember where I saw it, but uh... There's a story where someone gets, I think, goes down, gets into the back cave, and they see all, you know, Batman stuff, and they're like, "Oh man, that that, that rich guy Bruce Wayne must have a weird fetish. He must come down here and dress like Batman and pretend to be Batman." It's there something. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. All right. Anyway, yes. Uh, my favorite, my favorite thing was definitely Chester. Yes. <laughs> Because that cracked me up. Also, I love how Babs has a Hummer. Because that is so 2001. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah. I, I like, well, like Dinah pointed out, you know, just to carry like all the computer equipment and, and stuff. Yeah. 
Right, but I also feel like if this would have been written a couple of years earlier, it wouldn't be a Hummer. And of course, if you wrote it now, it, I wouldn't be a Hummer. I don't know what it would be. It would probably be something else. But I feel like the early 2000s, that was kind of right around when Hummers first started being yeah. available to regular people. Yeah. So it was like a thing. And again, too, it's it's a way, it's a, you know, a subtle way to have that kind of have a Batmobile, but, you know, not be that noticeable but back then. Right, like that one in the very first one we forgot to talk about where Dick's Nightwing's driving his car home and that guy's like, what? And gawking at the window, he's like, oh, whoops. Oh, yeah, because <laughs> he gets parked the, the windows, windows. Yeah. Or whatever, yeah. That was pretty good. All right. Uh, all right, should we get to the last one? Yep. All right. All right, Nightwing 58, August 2001, A World of Hate. Uh, Chuck Dixon, Mike Lilly, penciler. Uh, yeah, I think we're back to the original team here from issue one. Finally, Nightwing and Shrike take on each other one on one, but as they are surrounded by Shrike's ninja henchmen, the odds are stacked against Nightwing. During the fight, Shrike also mentions an additional motivation to really earn the name Shrike. He thinks he has to kill the former boy wonder. When Shrike has his blade on Dick's throat, Black Canary interferes after using one of her cry bombs. She grabs Nightwing and informs Oracle that her boyfriend is all right. At Lock Haven Penitentiary, Torque approaches a man named Chili Vasquez, who is known to be able to smuggle illegal substances into the prison. Torque tells Vasquez that he needs an antihistamine called Arcatin. Meanwhile, Nightwing and Black Canary are running through the old pump house, but Shrike is able to catch up. He puts a chain around Canary's neck and connects the other end to one of the old pumps that he just activated. Now Nightwing has to fight Shrike, but the clock is ticking before Donna gets strangled to death. Oracle also entered the building and rolls right into the Ninja Warriors, but the thugs quickly learn that they should not mess with the woman in the wheelchairs. They get electrocuted once again. In the end, Nightwing is able to defeat Shrike and save Black Canary as well. Completely exhausted, Dick passes out. When he wakes up the next day, he finds himself in the watchtower and receives a warm welcome back kiss from Barbara. Um, I would like to say when you read that summary, again, very thorough. But if they can call Shrike a hench boy, they really miss an opportunity to call those guys hench ninjas. Yes, yes, it's a ninja henchman. Yeah, it should be hen yeah, hench ninjas is even better than hench boy, yeah. <laughs> There, I mean, there's so many ninjas in comics. Yeah, that should become a term, hench ninja. Yeah. So it's a step up from just being a regular henchman. Mm -hmm. Charge you more. Had, you had to practice, get a couple belts. I mean, come on. Like when you work in fast food and you're opener or a closer, you get more per hour. I'd be like, yeah. if I'm a hench ninja, I expect my base rate of pay to be higher. Oh, true, true, true. Well, maybe that's why he that's why try, just calls them henchmen so he doesn't have to pay him as much. Maybe that's why he needed five million. Oh, I, ninjas aren't cheap. <laughs> that's true. I, that's exactly. All right. I, I don't know if I should. I don't, I don't want to pick too much, but it's just like that love letter that Barbara wrote him. I'm like, this, I'm like, well, since when does Bar Barbara's like my dearest darling? I'm like, when does she talk? When does she ever call him that? I'm like, oh, it, just, it seemed. Over well, maybe that's why she had to write it down because she felt self conscious. Wow, I was gonna say. Is it, I mean, it doesn't seem. They usually don't seem that flowery with, you know, speech wise with each other and stuff. I mean, yeah, maybe, I think maybe that's why she had to write it down. I guess, I guess. And again, just to drive the point home that they knew this was like from his lover and it wasn't just like, you know, it wasn't like a note for mom or something. So wait, what's up with, I thought Black Canary could like, she did the canary cry from her voice. There was, yeah, usually she can. There was a period here of a few years, like she had gotten injured. I think it was, in, I think it was, it's the Green Arrow Longbow Hunters, but she does get injured for a while and she can't, she can't use her voice like that. So I guess that she was, yeah, she was using like technology to like simulate it. Oh, okay. Yeah. But yeah. They had, I think it was, like I said, I think it lasted a, few, a couple of years where, she, yeah, she, like her throat, she got an injury and she couldn't use her throat that way. Oh, okay. I like follow me, Junior Batman. <laughs> ah! uh, but yeah, I mean, I mean, that was a pretty good uh, 
high stakes fight at the end because yeah, Dick's trying to like ward off uh, Shrike. Meanwhile, he has to you know keep Dinah from getting like pulled into that pump and stuff. Right. Well, I also like this quote because it just even though we knew Shrike was a total douchebag. Don't you ever fight your own battles, Chester? You have to have a woman save your butt. I was like, ah, oh, I can't wait to see this asshole go down. <laughs> <laughs> Which is yeah. exactly how Dinah reacted. He's like, oh, I'm going to enjoy kicking your head off. Oh, uh, yeah, I think, yeah, that's it. It's like, if you didn't hate him enough, here's, an, here's another reason, kids. Just like those hench ninjas that are like, oh, we're going to get this cripple. And she's like, Cripple my butt. Oh, well, I think she does. She say like, yeah, cripple, yeah, cripple my butt. Yeah, no, I'm not sorry, that was Barbara. But yeah, 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 yeah that is funny. Yeah, uh, I, I even, I didn't even think of that. Yeah, they get electrocuted twice in this story. <laughs> right. Oh yeah, in the beginning. I hope those, those, yeah. those hench ninjas learn something. Mm -hmm. And we see how well Dick's trained because in the beginning of this, he's using like the ninjas' weapons, like he has nunchucks at one point, and using their own weapons against them. Oh yeah, the stupid prison scene where uh, yeah they're trying to get that antihistamine. Yeah, they give the uh, amygdala to you know get yeah, that. which that doesn't happen. In, that's gonna happen no, next, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. coming. It's kind of coming up here. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, like you kind. I guess he kind of had to do the chain scene because it's like <laughs> Dick could take down Shrike alone. Dick and Black Canary. Yeah, no, he Shrike would not have a chance. You know. Well, I think it's also nice. I mean, I don't know. People people prefer what they prefer, and that's mm -hmm. fine. Um, I, I guess I like it when other people are in Dick's book because he gets along so well with other people. And oh, he's yeah. He's such a personable guy that I don't mind it when – other people show up in his book and he gets help because I feel like that's being sensible and yeah. that's what a smart person would do is accept help when it's offered. Um, I know sometimes I know one of the criticisms some people had when Tom Taylor a little while ago, they were like, Oh, since Dick's friends keep showing up to help him out, I feel like he Tom Taylor's writing him as not as competent. And I was like, uh, I feel like, if your friends want to come hang out and you want to bust some heads together, why not? That seems fun. Um, so I guess. Yeah. And if, if it depends help. on what you like, but I liked it that Barbara and Dinah came to help him and oh, yeah. the dick was like, thanks. <laughs> oh yeah. I, I, enjoy, I enjoy anyone teaming up with Nightwing more than like Batman. That it wasn't like no medicine in my city or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Batman, my favorite character. And again, it's, it's so funny because I think we got like a different penciler each issue of this arc. And it's so funny because it's like it, it's kind of foreshadowing what's to come because, you know, it was Rick Leonardi in the in the second issue, which, you know, he was on Devin's run. And then this one's Mike Lilly, who was later in Devin's run, you know. After like, you know blockbuster blows up the building and you know Although so they all did a good job of kind of having a somewhat similar style i mean you yeah. could tell that it was different but it wasn't it wasn't completely oh so, you know yeah. the way you sometimes get yeah. yeah yeah it wasn't bad at all yeah i just thought it was funny because it was kind of you know giving you a little sneak peek of the, what was going to come even like a year or two down the road uh, I will say, though, that uh, on the last page, the Band-Aids they have over Dick's cut, uh, shouldn't the Band-Aid be more over the actual cut itself? <laughs> I don't. I mean, I see that. I think it's I think it's more just to hold, like, the, is there... Or maybe those are stitches. <laughs> well, I know there's stitches underneath. I think those ones are oh, just, okay. like, kind of just, like, keep it, you know, trying to keep the uh, cut from, like, you know, the stitches from popping. Like back open, yeah. I suppose so. But no, yeah, Dick, say, Dick saves Black Canary, and then he passes out, and then Barbara and her bring him out. But no, I do like that scene, yeah, when Dick, you know, just jumps. He's like, I got to do this now. And yeah, he snaps that chain that was 
you know, holding Black Canary, and then he's just like, wait here, and then he just like kicks Shrike's butt. But yeah, no, I did. Overall, I mean, I wish we'd see more of this, you know. I think, that, I think that's one of the fail. Besides, like, Blockbuster and a few, I don't know, maybe a few other ones, it's like, do we ever have, did Dick have his own rogues that, like, last? I mean, I mean we had, like, Raptor for a while that he really didn't last, or, or, or was... Yeah, not really. I feel like that's always been... That's kind of been the issue with most of the Bat family offshoots is they don't tend to have as good of rogues. What the, well, although the other, I mean, the other problem somewhat is though, as soon as a rogue becomes good and people are like, that's a good rogue, then they become more of a Batman or Superman rogue or something. Because I mean, Deathstroke was a Teen Titans rogue, and he was particularly obsessed with Dick. So Deathstroke is really a Teen Titans Dick rogue, but because Deathstroke became popular, sometimes they wrote him as facing Batman. Oh yeah, I mean yeah. Once a character gets too popular, yeah, they they start fighting everybody. But yeah, I think it's the whole like legacy character thing because I know like even Wally for the longest time, once you know he became the Flash, he didn't have like rogues that like a lot of reoccurring rogues because it's like when Barry first died like all his rogues either died or retired it was like years before they brought, brought back like Captain Cold and all those classic rogues yeah because yeah I, th I mean I, and I think it's partially because I mean Batman in particular has really good oh yeah like he has some of the best. I mean, I know for so long Superman was the flagship mm -hmm. of, but particularly, I feel like as people have become more interested in villains, that has helped elevate Batman because his villains are definitely of a better look. I mean, Lex Luthor is a very good villain. And honestly, it's like Lex Luthor has become scarier as we progressed into late stage capitalism because, oh, yeah, yeah. because Lex I mean, Lex Luthor was just like, oh, a rich guy. But now I'm like, oh my God, Lex Luthor is like, all of these people in the real world are basically becoming Lex Luthor. Oh, yeah. Lex but I mean, aside from that, I can like barely name another Superman. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I mean, back in the you know pre-crisis, Lex Luthor was just like an evil, sci you know, like a mad scientist, you know. But then you know, once they rebooted, John Byrne made him, you know, the evil rich guy, and it became way, yeah, way too close to reality. Yeah, so now I'm like, okay, Lex Luthor is definitely terrifying because he's real. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's like me and Lilith have talked about before. It's like almost like, I mean, it's you can't do it now, but it's like Lex is almost like Bruce's opposite, you know? He's, he's another rich guy, but he kind of, you know, he's like the opposite side of the coin. But yeah. Yeah, Sue, so, I mean, oh God, they, that's the other problem. Superman, it's like they anymore, it's like they either do Lex or Brainiac or General Zod or Doomsday. I mean, I mean, I know he has other ones. But... I mean, I mean, we could stay here all night naming Batman rooms. And name me anyone. I mean, I know Sony's trying with Spider-Man, but it name me someone, anyone else who has uh, their rogues get their own movies. Batman. You know. Yeah, yeah, just Spider-Man because Venom, I guess. <laughs> but I mean, Joker, Joker gets his own movie. I mean, I mean, they've been trying with Harley Quinn with Suicide Squad and then Birds of Prey. I mean, so. But that's the thing. It's, it's something. That's the other problem. Villains get too popular, and then they try to make them almost like anti-heroes, like they did with Harley. Right. Yeah, and it's okay with Harley since she's newer and she does have that. But 
they need to stop with yeah. Joker. <laughs> He's just a villain. Same thing. I've seen people talk about it with Disney. And yeah, that's like Disney. We don't need. I mean, like, I thought the Cruella movie was fine and interesting and Maleficent was fine. But at the same time, like, I didn't really need those. Like, I also enjoyed them as they were just bad people. <laughs> Well, I was going to say, I was going to say, how do you, how do you feel about that? Where like now it seems like it doesn't matter who it is, you know, what, you know, what company it is that, uh, you know, every, now every villain needs a tragic backstory. Like they had a tra you know, like a bad childhood or something. And I'm like, can't you just enjoy sometimes? It's just like, oh yeah, this, this person's a bad person because they're an a-hole. Right. Yes. I think I, mean, I, I, I see giving some people like a tragic back, like Mr. Freeze or something, but it's like, not everybody needs that. Right. Yes, uh, I really think it's just a way to make money. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, sometimes it's kind of annoying because, like, it's nice, particularly when it's something like a Disney, well, or superheroes, it's nice to have a good villain. That you're like, this person is bad. Mm -hmm. And we know they're bad. And we just appreciate that they're bad. <laughs> Oh, yeah, because that's the other thing. I think it's in February or something. Like, Chip Zdarsky is writing the Batman book right now. Supposedly, he's going to be doing, like, a definitive Joker origin. I'm like, we don't yes, need Yes, I saw it, and I was like, really? Really? I feel like I don't need it. Yeah, nothing says chaos like a very finely detailed origin. No, the, yes. killing, the killing joke was fine. when the jo you know, They kind of laid out an origin. Alan Moore laid out an origin, but it's like Joker's like, I remember it different every day, so it's like... Is that the origin? I don't know. Right. Even I don't know. Sometimes it's nice to have mystery so that you can have your own. Yeah. Your own head cannon or whatever. Cannon's money, okay. money, you know. Right. Like I said, the characters get too popular. And... And then yeah, like I said, yeah. I mean, Maleficent was fine, the movie. But, I mean, when I watch Sleeping Beauty, I'm also just like, yeah. Maleficent, man. She's bad. <laughs> exactly and joker 2 is going to be a musical what um i cannot wait to see that because that's going to be so wild if you like that i mean if you like that that's fine but i'm like i think a lot of the people who went to see you know enjoyed the first joker movie i'm like i don't know if that's their target audience a musical no I see i think honestly i think it's genius in a money-making sense because so many people are going to go see it because they'll be like what the f is this yeah, yeah. and because like that's why i want to see it because i'm like this is either going to be a train wreck and so it'll be funny for that or if they manage to pull it off i'll be way impressed that they managed to pull it off so i think it's gonna make tons of money because people are gonna be like this is so weird how can i not go I guess, yeah, because even if people complain about it, like, oh, I gotta see this. Yeah, you're you're probably right. Yeah, I mean, it's like so weird that you can't that you you can't look away. <laughs> exactly, it's like a train wreck. Uh -huh. It's a dumpster fire. You can't turn your eyes away. <laughs> exactly. I think I, I think I said it's probably gonna be a dumpster fire. All right. Anything else on these issues? Uh, no, not on these issues. But I will say in terms of like establishing other characters and stuff um, for Dick, I know people um, and like he wasn't Nightwing. So I thought they did a good job with Grayson with what they had to do. Mm -hmm. But overall, Dick doesn't like totally make sense as a spy as people said that would have maybe been better for Jason um, or something but I did think that Grayson did a very nice job of establishing side characters particularly Tiger Tiger is super sweet and bringing Grayson in like with Midnighter I know Midnighter was not invented for Grayson but bringing those in yeah. and giving him some more characters that was awesome yeah, no, it kind of works because it's like Dick was like kind of like a reluctant spy. You know, Jason probably would have been too into the oh yeah, I get to pull my gun and shoot someone. Okay. Right. Yeah, no. Again. Sometimes I felt like things were a little bit overly complicated in Grayson with Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But they did get some good characters in there, and I would enjoy Midnighter and Tiger popping up more. Oh yeah. 
And again, Tim Tim Seeley is not a good Nightwing writer, so or should I say Dick Grayson writer? Yes. And I mean Anne Helena. Although I don't know, yes. does, isn't she in Birds of Prey? Uh not the current. They there's a new version of Birds of Prey. Yeah, yeah. No, so. Well, not, she was cool too. Yeah, she was in Detective for a while. Yeah, I don't know where she's at now. All right. All right, kids. Only two more episodes right. of Lightning News this year. Wow. Yeah. The year is. Yep. I mean, that... November's almost over. The year is flying by. That's right. All right. So, yes. So, after your next two weeks, we'll get your uh, Electric Mullet episodes and then come back here. And the first episode will be, again, once, of course, our uh, new epi- new issue. Uh, reviews nightwing 109 titan 6 uh world's finest team titan 6 and i think we'll think we'll have two issues of beast War, beast world by then so uh i guess we'll be in the beast war by then and then the final episode of the year uh we'll keep it a little we'll keep it more hopeful because uh yes i uh scheduled us some dick grayson uh robin team up with superman issues from legends of the dc universe number six and dc comics presents 31 and 58 which i believe i hope those are on dc universe infinite they are i i I, yes before i put them down i'm like are these on the app yes they are the, and the two DC Comics Presents issues are funny because it's like two different stories, but I think they both take place at a circus. Oh, okay. I do know which ones you're talking So these are not like super recent. These are from like the 80s maybe? The the DC Comics Presents, those two are from the 80s. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I do. I think I do actually have those in paper copy. Okay, yeah. Yeah, the okay. DC Comics Presents was like every month Superman teamed up with somebody. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I do know those ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. But then the Legends of the DC Universe, that one's more modern. That's like, uh, that's probably like late 90s or early 2000s. Yeah. But it, yeah, but it, okay. it, but they, they told a lot of like flashback stories. So, yeah. all right, kids. So, yes. Yeah, so, send us your thoughts on all of that. Email us, capesandlunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 614 382 2737. That's 614 38 capes. And remember, you can find all things Capes of Lunatics, uh, episodes, social media, merchandise, uh, even a link to the Patreon. Please uh, subscribe to our Patreon. Uh, shout out to Ray, Russell, Justin, and Moz, our uh, patrons. Uh, but find everything at tubespace.io slash Capes and Lunatics Podcast Network. That's tubespace.io slash Capes and Lunatics Podcast Network. All right. And remember, kids, the holidays are just around the corner like a month away how less christmas is less than a month away kids so that's you have crazy a, do you have a superhero fan in your life a re a, a fan of just reading in your life your life then you must go on amazon because i know you know how to get the amazon kids pick up the <laughs> grace and boy wonder again if you're a fan of the character this is where you complete your knowledge there's i guarantee you there's at least one thing in here you did not know about the grace and so at least one i'm sure there's multiple things you didn't know about Dick Grayson and that. So yes, pick up Dick Grayson Boy Wonder on Amazon. Again, make make an educator's holiday a little brighter. So, uh, pick up Dick Grayson Boy Wonder. All right. Thank you for joining us, everyone. Uh, again, you'll get your electric mullet the next two weeks and then we'll be back for new New issue reviews, including Beast World. And then what? And with some Robin and Superman. Dick's fun uncle instead of his cranky dad. <laughs> uh, true, true. Oh, that's a scene we need. Like a scene of Dick Grace and Dick when he was Robin, you know, called Superman, Uncle Superman, and Batman. Like, don't do that. Mark Wade, you can give that to us. All right, kids, come back next time. Remember, join us same wing time, same wing channel. Think Nightwing News. Say hi to Chester for me. <laughs>